if I missed anyone, let me know. All right, we are now live streaming here at the Word is Right. Awesome sauce, so glad to have everyone. Welcome to our second annual Rocky Horror Poetry Show. Uh, very exciting, I love having Halloween uh, open mics. Uh, it is, is super exciting. All right, tonight, uh, the open mic list is very small, so take five or six minutes, feel free. We do not have a featured reader this evening, so you are all our features. Uh, you're welcome to take that time. I will not put you on, on the clock, but don't do a 10 hour like monologue, please. All right, ground rules for the night. Uh, really any topic goes, it does not have to be about Halloween. You do not have to be dressed in costume, but if you choose to be the extra points to you. Uh, welcome, welcome. If you're not following us, please like, share, subscribe, follow us, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I believe we are now going to be starting a Twitter account with Word is Right. So that's very, very exciting. Thanks so much um, to Jeff Taylor for that. All right, some upcoming announcements. Next Saturday, uh, since it's right uh, the week of Halloween, we will be doing poetry and a movie and you get your choice. So you have to be in the room, in the Zoom room, you get your choice. Um, one of my favorite scariest movies, which is um, a, a Freddy Krueger, Friday the 13th, or, I mean, excuse me, Nightmare on Elm Street, or uh, you can do Hocus Pocus, which is also one of my favorite movies. They're very polarizing. So we'll, we'll do an hour open mic, and then we will go to either Nightmare on Elm Street or uh, hocus pocus whichever the room decides so don't miss next saturday if you would like to come the following saturday that is november uh november 12th we will have stephen blaine here doing a full uh featured musical set with us uh if you don't have anything to do saturday november 26th there will be a friendsgiving event open mic here at the word is right i believe chance on and some other hosts are going to be leading that we have uh in december we have our anniversary show coming up shocky g yes there we go shocky i love it let's go uh, so December, we have our anniversary show where we invite all the feature readers back to the Word is Right for the year uh, and uh, give them an opportunity to come back together in one really incredible show. We will not have a show Christmas Eve and then the New Year's Eve show will be here. New Year's Eve, we're going to drop the ball from every time zone across the U.S. We will be here. Our hosts will be here to do that. So if you are interested in popping through at any time on New Year's Eve, uh, we welcome you to do that. All right. Uh, new shows. Uh, this coming Sunday is going to be, no snap, hang on. I don't have my, um, not this coming Sunday, in two Sundays, November 6th. The first Sunday of the month is our brand new show, Out Loud. It is an LGBTQ podcast live show hosted by Shaki G, Jacob R. Moses, and Star Child, and the featured guest this uh in november are going to be uh sabrina benign and i don't have um shaki who is who is the other guest i don't have it in front of me my apologies i just did the freaking it's, um Brittany. it's, it's just my best Nelsie, friend. right yeah she's sabrina my best friend benign. she's a physical therapist or mental therapist Yes, Sabrina Benheim and Brittany Melfi will be here and they're going to be talking about um, LGBTQ and mental health and all of that incredible, inc it's really such an important conversation since uh, that is going to be the theme for their November show. So please tune in if you have not had a chance uh, to check out Out Loud, the LGBTQ podcast, please do. That is the first Sunday of the month and I believe it is at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, go to the Word is Right Facebook, Instagram. It is all there. All right, tonight the open mic list reads Chanson, Robert, Eddie, Greg, and Shockey. Uh, there, there's nobody new in the room, so I won't go over the ground rules. Y'all just, you know, y'all know what you know. So let's go. Chanson, you ready? Yes, ma'am. And don't, and, and feel free to plug your show, right? Chanson does the Hear Me Coup on the second and fourth Sundays of the month here at Word is Right. Plug your show. You're good. Okay. Um, yes, Hear Me Cool is on the second and fourth Sundays um, every month. Uh, 
we have about it's, it's a small group that comes in, but feel free to join us every uh, second and fourth Sunday. Um, also, the postcards um, program. Uh, please feel free to uh, send your address so we can add you and so we can get the postcard program up and running um, like a well-oiled machine. Okay, so now um, I have two um, haiku to share. I'm left all alone, screaming, but no one can hear. Scariest moment. Number two, all things are scary if you have never been free to live your own life. Thank you. Oh my God, Chance On, let's go. Yes, we um, have challenged Chance On to break the Guinness Book of World Records for most high cue, right, Robert? You gotta ring the bell, ring the bell. <laughs> ring my bell. <laughs> yes. Ring my bell. So if you're interested in learning about haiku, go to Chance On's workshop. It's free, right? Uh, the second and fourth Sunday of the month. And of course, postcards, poets, postcard poets program, if you're interested in doing that, let us know. All right, Robert F., you're next, followed by Eddie, Greg, and then Shaki. Happy Halloween. I'm Robert Fleming, a word artist from Delaware. And I'll start with my plug. Uh, my recent Halloween poem was published in Oddball uh, two days ago. And my next publication will be with Devil's Party Press, who's doing an anthology called Solstice, which we published in January of 2023. And I will share um, my poem final Zoom meeting, uh, the publisher, uh, Diane, uh, wrote that after reading final Zoom meeting, you will never attend a Zoom meeting again. Here we go. I was fine offline. I was chatting my cat out of its hat. Entered Zoom on a web surfer's broom. Muted my voice, muted my video. Hand raise greet, meet other participants. Greetings in the meeting to Satan, Jason, Freddy, Pazuzu, Snake, Satan and Pazuzu mute video to show a red slash. Jason and Freddy click three red dots to show a blank name. Snake unvideoed to video a gray square. I am displayed in the center box. Bordered with blank boxes with red slashes. I am lost in Zoom, my doom awaits. Oh moderator, be my savior. Satanist Sam, I am surfaces. You are not on the invitee list for Satan's Zoom meeting. Once you enter, you can exit with a Satan pass. Get you a exit pass? Sam, I am, am uncertain. Satan is so sorrowful. So sorry in hell, it's COVID-19 too. It's souls six feet apart and Zoom meetings too. Stay for the meeting, could be healing. Agenda is hell Zoom changes. Change share screen to scare screen. What is your way? Way in, 
or way out. Final Zoom meeting. Oh, let's go. Robert Fleming, everybody. Robert F., yes. Can I share the screen and show a few oh, uh, graphic here. images? Let me, let me click that for you real quick. There you go. So after that uh, scary, um, scary one, I'm going to do something a little lighter. One of my cartoons that I always loved as a child was uh, Casper. So this is uh, a, a visual poem where I took a haiku and added a graphic image. Off-duty driver drives Uber passenger. Casper ride complete. And then this is the same um, version where the human is a man. And I'll share one more, uh, share one more image. This will be the cover of my upcoming uh, visual poetry book, hopefully next year. It's called White Noir. It's uh, primarily uh, visual poems, which are black and white. And it will be published by Plan B Press. And I want to wish everybody a happy Halloween and hope that everybody will be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> I hope I can sleep tonight too. I don't know, you see feeling a little crazy. All right, here we go. Thanks, Robert F. All right, we got Eddie and then, and then UCP are on deck. Hello, my witches and fiends and anything in between. Happy Halloween. Hope everyone's ready for some boo-tacular scenes. All right, let's do this. This is called The Mask Omen. I didn't choose the monster, but the monster chose me. This beautiful life calls my name. I wear the mark of the bloodthirsty beast. I have no humanity or shame. I was a small boy who was ugly. Kids beat me without mercy. Nobody helped me willingly. I cried and worriedly. They threw me into rivers while end. The water was going through my mouth and lungs. I yelled help, but I didn't have any friends. Oh, the deep salt water did suffocate and stung. I found this mask belonging to nowhere. The mask playfully sings. It promises to bear all my words with care. The start of new beginnings. I packed him in my backpack. I pay no mind. His words were blissful heart attacks. I was amazed by the signs. After school, the neighborhood's bullies chased me. I was a deer in the headlights. Please, just leave me alone, please. I couldn't skate with all my might. They held me down. They deeply bruised my stomach and face. I looked like a mall clown. My blood and tears smeared with unmerciful grace. They left. I gargled with sadness and pain. My back power roared ferocity. It roared words of crimson rain. It lured me with monstrosity and curiosity. It roared, tomorrow you won't suffer no more sorrow. I smile with a crooked smile of glee. It says their punishment will be agonizing and slow. Thank you, my angel, who will save me. The day after, there was nothing new. Bullies chased me while end. They were hyenas at the zoo. I heard someone said, put me on my terrified little friend. I put on the mask. I felt so many screams and whispers. It happened so fast, their bodies went completely timber. I took off the mask. They were bloody and life was dolls. It completed its task. Wait, was I the cause? I brought off a storm. They were butchered without remorse. The mask made me transform. The mask drifted off course. The next day, 
I saw a few guys chase a woman that had animals in their eyes. She screamed for help throughout the land. Nobody came. Why, well, I'm not surprised. I followed them into a vacant alleyway. I put on the mask. I watched blood fly and bodies decay. It was a start, but it didn't last. I killed them. Me and my crimson hands. I made these beasts fall. My mask. I truly understand. I tried cuffing the woman, but she slapped me. She had the same hate as the bullies. I was the monster of her misery. I will help to set her free. I put the mask on again. I hugged her close and tight. I just wanted the screams to end. It felt wrong, but it felt so right. I ran covered with blood and perfume. My body nest away in the darkness. I was showered with light from the moon. I was consumed by a demonic animalistic bliss. Hold on. <clears throat> Let's go, Poetastic. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You want to know my name? Here's a hint. Happy Halloween. Killing's my Bloody Mary game. Would you be the next prey for my crime scenes? Oh my God, we created a monster. Woo! <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's go eddie oh my god that was so scary that was a crazy scary voice i kind of like it when you're all in that mask there you go yes yeah, maybe eddie, we should do a mask do? workshop like a workshop where you're wearing masks okay. yes i think that's a great fucking idea all eddie, right. <laughs> will, you my, will you be my monster daddy <laughs> there you go robert <laughs> Yes, yes. What a sugary delight. Robert, are you R. Kelly or what what are, what are you? What Shocky? What Shocky? Never mind, it was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> like like everything here is appropriate. <laughs> All right, my little ones are getting home. Oh. So, no, 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 no. Yes, but go on that side. All right. Uh, I'm going to get them out of this it's area. Adorable. <laughs> they yeah, like to be very. Oh, good. Here comes Terry Rose Dirt, and I can add her to the list. All right. Uh, awesome, Eddie. Thank you. So we're going to move to UCP Gone Mad and welcome Terry Rose Dirt, and I got you added to the list. All right. So we'll go <laughs> great. We'll go uh, Urban Cowboy Poet, the Shack, the Terry Rose. Can you hear me through this mask? Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. It's not very sanitary in my laboratory here. I, the Zoom link said six o'clock mountain time. I turned it on and said, wait for the start meeting starts at 8 p.m. But no, yeah, the Zoom, the Zoom link was wrong, but we had fixed it to say seven and the poster did say seven and the Facebook event was registered at seven, which is why I encourage people to go to the Facebook event links. Uh, so when you go to Word is Right and you go to events, all the events are there and it has the time there. So sometimes the Zoom might have a time to discrepancy, but go always go to the event page. The event page will have the right time on it. I, I figured out you know, what you were doing. You were what? doing the time warp again. The time warp! We're doing the time warp again! I'll totally play that song, yes. All right, you see. That I don't have five or six minutes, but I will I will write the scary story here in my laboratory I call the House of Pain. While your head you may be scratching, you will see this thing I'm hatching if I can only find a brain. I will putter and I'll fiddle with this here individual and stake my claim to fame. This one's tall, so I'm thinking I can make another Lincoln if I only had a brain. Oh, I can make you cry with all the blood and gore. I'll make a creature never seen before. And then I laugh <laughs> and make some more. Oh, critics say I'm a nothing. Down their throats, I will be stuffing the glory that I'll gain. This here body that was buried could be soon dance and be merry if he only had a brain. 
And this creature isn't bleeding. And that's because I'm needing another body part. If I find one, I'm presuming I can make him kind of human if I only had a heart. Thank you. That's not five minutes, but that's uh, all I got so far. I'm <laughs> that's okay. We <laughs> we invite you another round. It's no problem. Oh my and God, Greg. I was expecting when you took off the mask. <laughs> I was what? expecting. I was What's expecting that? like something to explode or like, I don't, I don't know. I, was I can, do, I can like, do what I did on the, I'm going to do what I did on the karaoke the other night. Yes. Yeah. Hey, back to back, belly to belly. It was a zombie jamboree took place in the New York cemetery. Oh, it was a zombie jamboree took place in the New York cemetery. Zombie from all parts of the island. Some of them are great Californians. Since the season was carnival, they got together in Bacchanal and they were singing back to back, belly to belly. Well, I don't give a damn because I'm soon dead already. Back to back, belly to belly, it's a zombie jamboree. One female zombie, she wouldn't behave. See how she's dancing out of the grave. In one hole, she's hiding. One whole hand she's holding a quart of rum, the other is knocking on a conga drum. You know, the lead singer starts to make his rhyme while the other zombies is rocking in time. One bystander, he had this to say, it was a trip to see the zombies break away and they were singing back to back, belly to belly, well, I don't give a damn cause I stole that already. Back to back, belly to belly, it's a zombie jamboree. Back to back, belly to belly, it's the... Don't give a damn because I'm soon dead already. <laughs> back to back, belly to belly, with zombie jamboree. Hey, what a zombie jamboree. From Times Square to the Statue of Liberty. Uptown, downtown, zombie jamboree. There's a high wire between, high wire zombie between the world trade, a King Kong zombie on the Empire State. But the biggest bomb zombie is Tokyo to Rome, the zombies who call this city home. Back to back, belly to belly, well, I don't give a damn because I'm soon dead already. Back to back, belly to belly, it's a zombie jamboree. Everybody, back to back, belly to belly, well, I don't give a damn because I'm soon dead already. Back to back, belly to belly, it's a zombie jamboree. It's a zombie jamboree. That's it. Yes! Yes! Serving Cowboy Bowen! Oh, what? I love it. Thank you so much. Buy my uh, book. Buy my book. A lot of people yes, said, oh, I want Michael. his book. Get his book. They it haven't bought it yet. It's an incredible book. Um, Thank you, Bob. Yeah. It's, it's on the zombie billboards. Yes. Uh, do get his book. You, you just have to. It's an incredible. What would be so amazing if you did like a like a holiday edition. So you did a section for like Halloween, a section for like um, Christmas or, you know, like different religious holidays. That would be so cool to do a book of urban legends around holidays would be amazing. Uh, there are, just, I found one Christmas legend I didn't put in. I didn't write up. But I that's mean, okay. Some, you save it for the next book of, of, of holiday legends. Yeah, legends it was, it was, could have been a, it was pretty go. Cool. <laughs> gory. I mean, it was more like a Halloween, but it was Christmas. That's okay, it involved, right? That's what it involved a Santa Claus. Um, I'll put the info in my chat, my YouTube and my book. Uh, there's nobody here from New York. I don't have ticket information about Carnegie Hall yet, but I'm coming to Carnegie yes. Hall. Yes, absolutely. Carnegie Hall. Very On Halloween, good. Monday, I'm going to be practicing. I'm going to be singing Ode to Joy just like this. Or Beethoven oh. songs. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yep, yeah, that, that's great. I love it. I, yep, I fully support that. <laughs> oh my God, let's go. Every cowboy poet's gone mad and I love it. We're here Halloween at the Word is Right doing the Rocky Horror Poetry Show. Welcome, Marianne Peterson. Welcome, Terry Rose Jordison. All right, next up, we got Shaki G, who is our hostess with the mostest at Out Loud. And then we have Terry Rose followed by Marianne Peterson. Um, I will do a poem from Sylvia Plath, uh, one of her gothic horror poems. And if we want to go another round, I'm welcome to do another round. You ready, Shaggy? Yeah, I don't have any Halloween poems. Just okay? Okay. 
Um, I'll do this one about a graveyard. Have you ever wanted to? Have you ever wanted to feel what the world is like when you're not there? I sat in a graveyard, silent as a worn-down tombstone. There wasn't even the whisper of an epitaph. Here, just a low buzz of a semi-cool breeze. Falling leaves dancing to this earthly DJ. We like to believe graveyards are all grief and guilt. But once the mourners leave, they take their goodbyes with them. The graveyard becomes a garden of roses and forgotten memories. You cannot feel alone here. You either believe that spirits are sitting with you and watching, or science is having a field day beneath your feet. The irony is both feel like they could be right when all when you have nothing left. You wonder if you sit still enough if someone will mistake your body for a mausoleum of regret, ask if they can enter their broken dreams inside you. What I mean is a graveyard seems like the most logical place to be alone, but tombs have a way of asking questions that time has left unanswered. And then <clears throat> I wrote this last night. Uh, this has nothing to do with Halloween. It's called Secret Garden. Not last night, I wrote it a couple nights ago. A friend sends me a video of a woman who says she actually likes sucking dick. Treats it like an adventure, loves to see her man happy, so she enjoys bouncing the balls off her tongue. Goes into so much detail, the gay in me gags. He captions it, look at this whore. Like he has never complained that women do not handle his dick the way he likes. I ask why her choices make her any less women when man, men fantasize about just this. Women are expected to be a freak in the sheets, but a secret in the sheets, like secret has become synonymous with what it means to be a lady. Her body, a secret garden, blooming for men's pleasure, flowers plucked against her will. Wonder why her roses grow thorns, weed twist into nooses. A place where men bury their seeds six inches deep, if they're lucky, and grow invasive species and claim the garden became too much jungle to navigate. I wonder if women are so much a secret, why men do not hold them closer, try harder to protect them. He says that two can only keep a secret if one of them are dead. He isn't willing to give up her, his life for this one. Mm. Damn, mm. that hits home for me tonight. For sure. Too much jungle to navigate. Yeah, I'm, I'm apparently too much jungle to navigate. So I, I feel that. I feel that. Try harder. You try fucking harder. <sighs> yeah. You're never too much. You're just too much for the wrong person. I, yeah, thank you for saying that. Because I, I don't think that, I really don't think, I mean, I know I'm a lot. <laughs> but I think I'm a lot in a good way, you know. Um, I'm a good person and, and I'm, I do my best and I try my hardest. So you forgot one thing you're loved. Woo. Yeah. Thank you, Eddie. That's all I can do, you know, is do my best and be a good person and just put good intention behind everything. And that's it. And fuck it. You know, people are going to get it or they don't, they're going to get on the bandwagon or they won't and they will try harder or they won't. So fuck it. I, I, I'm a human being. I can only do so much. All right. Let's see if Terry Rose Jertson is, um, is here. Terry Rose, are you here with us? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Hi, beautiful. I'm wearing, I'm wearing my Phillies, you know, gear and I'm looking at them freaking choking. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's not over till it's over. Oh, uh so upset right now <laughs> but anyway yeah they won last night so i was like yes but tonight <laughs> choke <laughs> do not lose i'm so mad anyway. Billy's horror. <laughs> um i have some can i share the screen screen share marissa ah You should be able to do it, Terry. I, I can do it. Yes, it's set for you. I'm going to turn this way. I don't know if that's going to change it, but it's hard for me to read it like that. Here we go. This is the thing I did today. 
Camping in a cabin, freezing cold, we slept on sacks, splinter, wooden beams of the floor, and peered through cracks to see forest floor below. Wind piercing my ears, high pitch howled through creepy structure, housing timid children. Our only solace was secret pillowcase stashes, mouth stuffed with candy. And here's our unhappy cabin. <laughs> Cause that was me and I was unhappy in the cabin. <laughs> I have a couple more like that. Um, one I did today also. To the prompt ego, father of psychology says system exists in mind. Where did the ego go? Did you draw that little brain? No, he's cute mm. though, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and then I have one more I'll do. Mm. This one was about my husband and I said, this is about you. Prompt, uh-oh. Uh-oh, someone screwed up again. Only you can stop the insanity. Trying but failing not to lose my shit. <laughs> and that is my face right there. <laughs> yes. Hell yes. <laughs> Let's go, Terry Rose. Did Should you get your dog it? dressed up? Did I get what? Did you get your dog dressed up? No, I I want to do that scraps um, outfit for for her, but she's so big. Like scraps is a little dog, so I don't know uh -huh. if it's gonna transfer, but whatever. The Phillies don't get on the board soon. I'm gonna lose my shit for real. <laughs> Should I read anything else? You, we, if you was... want, you're welcome to do one more if you want. We good. All right. Um, let me go into my um. Yeah, me. Whoop! It's not working. Okay, let me go into my note, my notes in here. And I have this sexy one I wrote. My favorite flavor of emotion: tantalizing inner, tantalizes innermost sanctum. Taste of lemoncello, cannoli, dusted with powdered sugar, tames disturbing thoughts, smothers with creamy sweet filling that foreplays with tongue of citrus and delicate bite of phallic shell, coating inhibitions, coaxing a small scream of pleasure, emotions awaken to overwhelm soul palate, with orgasmic colors, still craving for more. Mm. Very sexy, Terry Rose Jertson. We need to get another uh, anthology going for sure. Yeah, yes. uh, some, of my, some of my poems, that's my <laughs> Halloween costume up there, but I didn't do my face today. because I'm. It's so like, I'm gonna do it Sunday on the, um, on the feature, the Halloween feature that I'm going to do on the F U F M A, I'm going to do I'm going to do the whole get up and everything again. But it's just so much. It took me two hours to do my face, and I just, you know, I don't want to keep doing it, taking it off, doing it, taking it off. Yeah. So let me give you my... a tip about make about makeup like that. Be sure to put cold cream underneath as a base. And if or you lotion, don't, or you're likely whatever. to get zits. Yes. I didn't get any zits. I just was very uncomfortable with the makeup on. I just wanted to peel it off. And I did peel it off then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you, Terry Rose. Next up, we have Marianne Peterson. I will close. Actually, I decided to find an old poem that I, it's not an old poem. I mean, I wrote it like two years ago. It's very, it's <laughs> Yeah. for Halloween but yeah, I will I do it the this round and then I will do a Sylvia Plath gothic uh, at the end of round two. Are you ready, Marianne? 
yeah, just had to get out of the, the house for a little bit because of our roommate is watching a football game. Okay, this one is called O2 Halloween, and this is one of the two I'm going to do. But this one is the Halloween one. I wrote on the 24th of this month. Halloween is a spooky time of year. It's where the veil in between life and death is supposed to be the thinnest. You see a lot of people dress up in different costumes during Halloween. The most popular costumes seem to be the horror characters ones. I like Halloween because I get to dress up as someone else. I change my costumes every year, so I never know what I will be dressed up as until the next year. If a costume catches my eye and I can find it in my size, that's what I get to dress up as. Hunt houses crop up all over the place near Halloween. Have a happy Halloween. That's that one. Now the other one I'm gonna do does mention suicide. This one is called, Why Do You Want To Abandon Me? I wrote on the 28th of this month. Why do you want to abandon me? Just like everybody else has. Is it just because I am afraid? Is it because you don't truly love me? Is it because you think I am dumb? If you abandon me, I will surely die, whether from a broken heart or suicide. My heart has been broken too many times for me to survive another heartbreak. I cannot take any more heartbreak. I have had too much already. Oh my God, Marianne. Yeah. How's your husband doing, by the way? He's doing good for right now, but he's under a lot of stress. Yeah, especially because of our son uh, having another temper tantrum yesterday. A very violent temper tantrum. Well, please send him our best. I'm sending a lot of love and healing energy to you all. Uh, yeah, I do. I worry about my poets and their families, especially when yeah. they're going through hard uh, times. Yeah. I, I hope you stick around. If you're not following Marianne Peterson, please do so. Uh, Marianne, we call her Miss Straight Now Chaser. As a matter of fact, on Instagram, she's amazing. She has the best opening lines of any poet I know. <laughs> Straight up, let's go. All right, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a piece for uh, to close out round one. Uh, that is a, a little bit Halloweeny, I guess. And as I'm going through tonight, Shocky, I'm I'm thinking the wheels are turning to the uh, go find less. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm writing already a lot of stanzas in about that, so thank you for that prompt. Go find less. All right, um, this is a poem I wrote a while ago. It was published in an anthology here in New Mexico, and it is titled Undertaker. I went to the graveyard, dig myself out of that cold, hard, New Mexico caliche clay. Here comes, wait, here comes Stephen Blaine. All right, will Stephen get in? All right. I went to the graveyard, dig myself out of that cold, hard, New Mexico caliche clay. A day like any other. Canyon wind, winds blow along the old Route 66, rumbling breath beneath tired tires, humming America the beautiful through grooves in the ground. Sweet sounds, smells of juniper and pinon, dry. Hot desert sun rises and sets at the fretting of my hollowed heart. To turn these tires, return to our tired time. Climb all those stairs to you, to where I belong. So long ago a time it was, so long spinning wheels, so long, long language of love that never quite needed me back, held me back, loved me back. Where is the guide to survive now? This rumbling road awaits me. I turn the corner as shovels shift in the truck bed, nearing night. Headlights shine on the next line, disappearing behind me along this conveyor belt road sold off so long ago. Darkness is my comfort, swaddles me, 
smothers me, entices me. I have arrived, fallen sunken sun. The rattling metal truck subsides as the ignition relents. Quiet, clear mountain air, time to dig. Time to unearth my corpse. Of course, the intermittent rainstorm happens to fall upon my head as if the dead cared, as if I should either. In five minutes, it will have never even existed, exited, leaving those dust mark splotches across everything it touches. No fuss to be made. Get digging your grave. Get evicting your death, fucking fallen heart. It is not your time just yet. Not yet, never yet. Someone is waiting for you, warm and dry. No more hiding. No more crying. No more dying. Thank you. All right, Stephen Blaine is in the house tonight. Awesome. I'm very, very excited to see Stephen here. Stephen, if you would like, uh, since you're just joining us, we're, we're getting ready to do a round two. If you want to kick off round two, you're welcome to do that. Or just message me and let me know when you would like to go. Uh, because it is Halloween and he's a highly um, required musician at lots of different venues. We uh, have to bid for his time. So I will go ahead and go. We'll go to the online list here. We have Chance on and then Robert. At oh, oh, snap. Woo! Do what the fox. The <laughs> <laughs> what the fox says. You're looking Hi, very Marissa. How, how are you? I'm thinking like what predators do foxes have? <laughs> oh, yes. it's, it's good to see you all. Look at all of you here. It's been a while. Hi. Hi. Everybody feeling well? Park, where I met you. That that you know what? That literally is very close to the pet. That's right. That literally is close to where I met you. It's like right where I met you almost. That's crazy. I'm gonna turn off the avatar because. You know. <laughs> wow, I was not ready. All right, Robert Fleming's gets, got a cow. Going it gets tired. Oh, there goes Robert. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, and just a just a reminder, right? Stephen Blaine will be here the second Saturday in November, featuring full feature set. Is very exciting. Um, I have a set. Forget? That's great. I'm excited. What's the date? What's the date? <laughs> I was totally going to send you. I'm going to, I'm going to start promoting it. I'm going to start uh, promoting it. Come on. November 12th is Saturday, November 12th. Okay. I'm sure I have it down. Okay. And because we have the feature of the features coming up in December. So I was going to preemptively invite the November features. So they can have a spot if they want. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, I'm down and, for everything. Yeah. So every year we do our anniversary show at the end of the year. We do, uh, we invite all the feature readers from the whole year to come and read, to have a feature spot. Uh, and it's just a fun, a way to kind of celebrate those who have come. And well, let me, let me ask you a question. What, what are you, is it going to be the same time, the same start time? So it'll be uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern. Today has started a little I late. I have a thing. I have a thing at the bitter end at nine. <laughs> now, I'm not playing, but I have a friend who's playing a concert. Uh, uh, so we I could. Know. We. Yeah, I'm could. sorry. I'm not. I don't mean to be scheduling in front of all of you. I really apologize. I'm it's, sorry. It's totally okay. Um. So, cause. I mean, we. If you want, I could put you on first and then do the open mic list after. Or, or you could, or you could just, you know, bypass me because I'm being lame and, and give me an, uh, another time, another day. Well, I mean, okay, so we did. It's, up to, you. it's up to you. I just, I just don't want to, you know. Um, I have November 17th, I mean, excuse me, November 19th or December 10th. Those are the only other Saturdays that I have this year. The 19th. Of, yeah, I'm good on November 19th. November 19th. Okay, so I will change. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I can't see because my red my red glasses. Um. All right, so so Stephen Blaine will be here on a Saturday, November nineteenth. We're good. I'm honored. I'm honored. Truly. We well, we scheduled this a while ago, so I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't feel like it's like some sort of like um no I'm no not, I'm not cornering you I promise yeah I'm not worried okay. I, I I would love to be cornered it's fun <laughs> y'all if you're not doing anything Friday nights please uh get onto Stephen Bladen's page his Facebook page and go to his uh, go to his uh, services they're amazing I'm not Jewish but I it makes me wish I was sometimes <laughs> well, no, no. If 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 you attend two of our services, you, you're honorary. You're Jewish. So yeah. Oh, okay. You might, great. You're in. Shalom. You're in. You know, yeah. and Lizzie, Lizzie has <laughs> been helping me learn the difference between Shabbat Shalom and the other ones when it's not the weekend. So yeah. Oh. I'm a very good student. I I know you are. I, I and teacher. So you got it all going on. <laughs> I don't have it going, but at least the, the facade is there. So we're intact. Oh, well, we're still safe. That, that's, that's it. Woody Allen said the secret to life is just showing up. So right. <laughs> no shit. No shit. He had it totally right. He, he and George Carlin, they, they got it figured out, right? Uh, the secret to life is showing up. That is absolutely the secret. I, I can't tell you how, how true that is. Just show up, right? Uh, yeah. Anyways. Well, if you would like to uh, to do something, um, and if you're going to stick around, I'd be glad to put you into round two as well. Yeah, I would love to do so much. Let somebody else go first, though. So um, well, we've had like twelve re to eight readers go before you, so. Oh, oh, all right. Well, do do I do I sound is is you're it? Right? I mean, I already took up a lot of time. I hate people like me. I no, really you're do. you're fine. Okay, all right. Boy, Sh Shanson, smile. I never know if he's. If it's a real picture, if he's really smiling at, at what I'm saying, I, I, it's hard. It's, you know, it's because that picture is, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, that's, that's my picture. That's my picture. <laughs> just say, that's just his resting bitch face. It's hard to tell if, you, you know, if you're, you're laughing with me or at me, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> Chanson's resting bitch face is a happy face. <laughs> yeah, song, you don't have a resting bitch face. I'm just, I hope you're laughing. If you're not laughing, then fuck, I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, I'm laughing. Yeah, okay, okay, good. Okay, good. All right, so we just turned over Stephen Blaine for a little while, then we'll go into round two. Uh, that's this awesome. Well, I, I'm really excited. I booked the studio, I'm going into Dumbo in Brooklyn in a couple weeks, and uh, with, with my band, and we're going to record a bunch of songs. So, I'd like to play you a song from. The list that I've curated, um, it's among the songs I would like to record. I don't know if I will or not, but so, uh, so this, this one, I, you, I'm sure you've heard it before, but it's a little story song in a, in, in, in a neo jazz standard form. Coffee and a rose this morning Crescent stars and moon last night Never had the kind romance It filled me with so much delight So here's some coffee and a rose this morning I'll do anything for you Won't you let me show you I'd like to get to know you Unless you're only passing through How about a couple of eggs Over easy Butter toast and a dab of jam Doggies Conversation that's light and breezy That's the kind of guy I am So here's 
some coffee and a rose this morning. I read, I would surely like for you to stay. So please don't be demure. I'm flexible for sure. Have you any plans today? Now it stacks. fun like old person's track no i totally wrote lines to it for my next piece <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you i mean but do you get do you get the i mean i'm just asking you do you get that it's like it's it's just a, a thing you know it's a hookup i mean that's no, no, no. yeah i mean we we get that that he's <laughs> that he's not interested in the plus uh information uh he's really? not basis but uh it made me very but i wrote the anti to your song i said oh, i was not just a passing through oh and is the line oh, that i wrote uh and then i wrote passing through time past time god's infinite past time plan of laughs um and i wrote coffee in the morning so i i wrote i wrote just some lines to start i scribbled lines that you sing to write the to write the counter to your piece. And, and every and every that's sometimes when I do that, every, everything is another song. Like every yeah. every half of a sentence could be another song. Exactly cool. right. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many possibilities, but yeah. Uh, and it's not to say hookups are not valid, right? That you can well, I'm, I'm, but I, I'm, I'm saying as, as a writer, it, it seems to me like that's an interesting subject for a song. It, it's not, you know, like your typical stuff, which is like overt stuff. This is this is much more subtle. This is this is this is a kind of a mature approach. Yeah. You know? It's very honest. It's very it's very honest and upfront, which um, well, it's incredibly respectful. <laughs> we we all appreciate right. it's res it's respectful. <laughs> that's right. That's the way. If I if I was gonna have an affair, it would be very respectful. There you go. <laughs> and in New Car Mexico. Carol, I didn't say that. I didn't say no, that. No, Carol, he didn't say that. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get in trouble. She's going to come down here and hum me down. No. Uh, but yes, I agree that, um, no, it's a beautiful song. I don't I don't think, you know, you, you could sing anything and it would be very well received. You're too, you're uh, too nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm alone in saying that. I think you're incredible. All right, we're gonna keep going down the open mic list. Uh, so let's restart. We got Chance on Robert F, Eddie, Greg, Shaki, Terry Rose, uh, Marianne, and we'll wrap up with Steven. And I'll leave you with a, a poem I pulled up, a Sylvia Plath. 
uh, gothic poem, which is awesome at the end of today. Uh, Chan San, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I, I have two other haiku I just wrote. Um, hidden, hidden behind masks, no one will ever know you if you are untrue. Number two, Halloween parties, beverages are imbibed while donning costumes. Oh, dang, let's go, Chanson. That first one straight up, like we need to do, in fact, I'm gonna write this down. I mean, I have so much to do anyway, masks. So Chanson, remind me, we're gonna do a masks workshop. Okay. Um, I think that like, and everyone who's in the workshop has to be wearing a mask of some kind, whether they take a piece of cloth and they cut eyes out or they want to wear a bandana or a mask, like a COVID mask, I don't care. Everyone who's in the workshop has to wear a mask. So I think, and they, they change their name. It's total mm -hmm. anonymity. But I think that there's something to that uh, freedom in allowing people to write and express themselves. And I have yet to see a, a, a place that, that does that here so um, yeah let's do that all right chance on thank you all so right. much all right robert f are you ready good evening i'm robert I'm there the more uh uh word art about halloween First one was inspired by uh, the movie, Whatever Happened to uh, uh, Baby Jane. And there's our graveyard. When shade isn't enough, give grave. And I'm gonna share uh, one more group. And then that'll be it. There's an upcoming uh, submission for a magazine called Spectrum, which is out of California. And the prompt word is noir. So these will be my submission for that. Uh, the first one is Blanche en noir. Second one is Noir à Blanche. And then the third one I picked um, based on an object which could be white or black, which is the moon. So this is the moon white to black. And then this is the moon black to white. And those will be my submissions for um, my Spectrum magazine next month. And happy Halloween, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert F. And I do love that concept of the moon, black to white, full to new. Yes. Um, I, I love, uh, I love your, ch I love noir, first of all. And I love your choice. And I thought your images were really wonderful. Thank you. I really have been blessed by my uh, creative muse, and I'm grateful. <laughs> We're Lucky grateful. You. <laughs> you can't ask what his creative muse is. He can't divulge his secrets, can you? <laughs> it's it's my god. Oh, okay. Well, Stevens tapped. Wait, in wait a minute! Topic. You can no. You're not getting away with that one. It is your god. <laughs> God is your muse? No. Oh, oh I just hit my God brings me my creativity. All right, all right. Okay. It's too metaphysical. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm I'm gonna stay quiet. 
<laughs> just, so, so Stephen, before you go into your recording studio, yes, sir, you need to draw on your God and say a prayer that you'll have a good recording studio, and then when it happens, you'll be grateful to your God. You know, Stephen should talk to God more. He definitely is not. Robert. In with that <laughs> I, I, you could you couldn't have said it more eloquently <laughs> honestly <That was> <laughs> no steven you're good god loves you all right <laughs> i i certainly believe that god has led me to all of you and that's why i feel so blessed uh, my world has grown exponentially since covid so no seriously it, it really has all right, Eddie, you're up, uh, followed by Greg. Eddie, poetastic. He's probably doing other things. All right, so uh, UCP got mad. You are up, followed by Shocky G. And yeah, okay, well. Okay, I'm unmuted. I, you can hear me, right? I hear you, Urban. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I found, I didn't have many things more Halloween, but I found a Halloween cowboy poem by the king of cowboy poetry, Baxter Black, who just died a couple months ago. It was a bad day at Black Rock, that fateful Halloween. It all began the week before. The call had seemed routine. I got a marinade's chicken, Doc. I believe the sweetheart's bread. I'll swing by this afternoon, good Dr. Kelly said. Their mare was mincing around the stall as Kelly down the sleeve. This should only take a second. The assessment was naive. She's just a little nervous, Doc, but I guess I would be too. If you were pointing that thing at me, I'd kick you to Timbuktu, Timbuktu which is precisely what she did. So fast it was a blur. The next day, poor old Kelly wore a cast from hip to spur. With two days of the heel up, his left leg plasterized, he volunteered to take a call. I knew it wasn't wise, but you know him, you know men like him, I mean, a grad of Colorado, whose head, if not for gristle, wouldn't even cast a shadow. Another horse, a small wire cut there just below the hock. He's gentle as a newborn lamb. He'd never hurt you, Doc. And sure enough, he blocked the sight, though awkwardly, I think. He had to spread his legs, spread his legs the way giraffes bend down to drink. Relieved, he got his suits out, assumed the bent position. About the time a fly appeared in search of fly nutrition and lit upon the horse's foot. Just fate, I would suppose. The pony kicked to flick the fly, but cocked the doctor's nose sideways which left a thumb-side piece of snoz now dangling from the tip, like half a jalapeno flapping down upon his lip. 30 stitches on the outside. Then they taped that sucker tight. But them MDs must have chuckled because that bandage was a sight. It stuck out like a gear shift, like the fruit on prickly pear, like a big white avocado on a chainsaw grizzly bear. He stayed at home the next two days, hibernating in his cave, until his wife asked his help. The instructions that she gave were, pick the kids right up at nine at Johnson, 2nd Street. They're at a party, Halloween. Maybe you could trick or treat. Very funny, Calipube. But when nine o'clock came around, he wedged his cast into the truck and drove himself to town. When they let him in the Johnson's house, he matched the decorations. The kids all froze, then screamed in fear any heebie deviations. The mummy, no, it's Frankenstein. It looks so realistic. With crutch and cast and nose and scowl, it dang sure was sadistic. But the scream that topped that evening off was in Mr. Johnson's view. When he grabbed it, jerked the bandage off and said, hey, I know you. That's the great one, Max the Black. A Halloween cowboy poem. Yes! Yes, Urban Cowboy Poets gone mad tonight. I love it. 
UCP, we got to do a holiday uh, Urban Legends book. That would be so cool. Uh, yes, that would that would be very cool. That would that would be awesome. All right, welcome Christopher Moore. Just joined us. Welcome, welcome Christopher. He is the host of More Poetry right here on The Word Is Right. Next up, we got Shaki G, and 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 absolutely, Shaki, you're totally valid in uh in in butting in and saying what's he done, uh and and wondering and questioning. Please, y'all, if you're not sure if if a poet is done, please feel free to butt in and say were they done, uh because it it is a lot to juggle up here, uh and I am a human being and I do make mistakes. So uh it, if you're not sure, ask for sure. Uh, but yes, in this case, uh, Chance On was done, at least I hope. <laughs> I hope I didn't cut him off. Uh, so Shaki, you're, you have every right to say, hang on, hold up. Hey. Uh, and then we keep going. All right, Christopher Moore, I got you on the list. So we got Shaki, Terry Rose, Marianne, Stephen Blaine, Christopher Moore. So Christopher, you better find something. It doesn't have to be about Halloween. You ready, Shaki? Oh, I got something. Don't worry. Yeah. Woo! Now I'm worried. <laughs> Reverse psychology. I'm worried. I'm worried now. All right, Shaki, you, you ready? Yeah, I'm not. I don't have anything, but I'm going to read this one from Rudy Francisco. All right. So when people ask how I'm doing, I want to say my depression is an angry deity, a jealous god a thirsty shadow that wrings my joy out like a dish rag and makes use of my smile. I want to say getting out of bed has become a magic trick and I am probably the worst magician I know. I want to say the sadness is the only clean shirt I have left and my washing machine has been broken for months, but I'd rather not ruin someone's day with my tragic honesty. So instead I treat my face like a pumpkin. I pretend it's Halloween. I carve it into something acceptable. I laugh and I say, I'm doing all right. Holy shit. I'm writing that down. Tragic honesty. Um, I kind of feel like I wasn't done with you reading. <laughs> Do y'all do y'all feel like you weren't done yet? Like you needed more from Shaki? I'm not saying I need more. I just I feel like I wasn't done listening to you. I don't uh, I don't have any like um okay I have this one. It's I mean I guess it's not sad. No, it doesn't have to be sad. It's whatever you fucking wanted. We love it. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Today I want to write a happy poem. Where no people die, the police stay off the block. We watch Wakanda forever and remember we were royalty in real life once. We look at each other as, as brothers and sisters instead of ops. The funeral homes take stay off because we were so busy focused on living. The news does not mention Chicago to prove any bullshit theories about violence or guns or the black community. Today, my pen does not bleed. Instead, it simply glides across the ballroom of my notebook falls in love in between the lines, so much it doodles in the margins, says something like, remember when, and the memory makes your lips part like the Red Sea, shows off your ivory towers. This one is for keeps. Hold it tight in your palms and don't let anyone take it away. One of these days, memories will be all we have left. I want to write a poem that feels like that. Oh my God, Shaggy. You make me want to be a better writer. I'm just gonna, Shut up. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Like, you make me want to be a better writer. Like, straight up. Um, I don't know if anyone... I know y'all feel the same. Like, yeah. Um, she's amazing. We love her. Come come to Out Loud the first Sunday of every month. Fuck me. Uh, yeah. The pressure is on. I got I got to be a better writer for her. All right, uh, Terry Rose, are you ready? 
Harry Rose Jensen. She might be in like another of a mic. And sometimes people don't know. All right, so we'll move to Marianne and then we'll do Steven and then Christopher. Okay, we go all sides. Yeah, I'm a little loud when we one. Yeah. I'll go down the stairs. That would not have been good. Okay, this is this is a song I wrote called "It's Hard." I wrote it February sixth, January, March, April, April sixteenth, in two thousand sixteen. Live for today, that's what you say is hard to do. Too much pain is inside of me, it's hard to let go. It's hard for me to forgive sometimes, it's hard for me to trust, that's just me. Too many people have hurt me. Live for today, that's what you say. It's hard to do. Too much pain is inside of me. It's hard to let go. Too much bad has crossed my path. It's been like this in childhood. I feel like I don't belong anywhere. Wonder when I will find my place in this world. Live for today. That's what you say. It's hard to do. Too much pain is inside of me, it's hard to let go. Live for today, that's what you say, it's hard to do. Too much pain is inside of me, it's hard to let go. Thanks. Let's go, Marianne Peterson. Yes, it, it is hard to let go. Yep. I love that you do the ukulele and you sing and you do poetry and it's it's awesome that you do it all and you get yeah. out of your comfort zone. Let's go, yeah. right? Bobby? Let's yeah. go. I'm also uh, planning on uh, getting a flute eventually. Yes, you're gonna get a flute. Let's go. Yeah. Marianne Peterson's got like she has eight book eight books now, ten eight or ten. Books. A lot. I'm of working books. on my ninth and tenth books so. though. It's very exciting. Uh, very, very happy for you, Marianne, that you Thanks. have so much work out there. And please, please uh, send me love to your husband um, that he heals, that he recovers quickly, and your son and you. And if you need yep. anything, just reach out. We're here for you. You have a whole community of people behind you, okay? Yep. Thanks. Okay. All right, next up we got, we'll go Steven and then Christopher, and then I will wrap us up with a Sylvia Plath uh, Gothic poem. Awesome. That's a great way to end. I love that. <laughs> well, you're a better way to end, but we'll, we'll go with Sylvia Plath. <laughs> well, I, I was looking at the songs that, I, that I'm, I've chosen to curate for, for this album, and I have one that's a little, you know, it's called This Deja Vu. So that's as close as I'm going to get to your theme, you know. Um, so uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to try it for you. Um. You know, drama. Piano. Sax. I've never been on the streets, but I just followed my feet. And in the restaurant, the table by the front, you sit in your favorite seat. And do you feel it too, this deja vu? What is the strange thing happening? What kind of moment does it bring? I've got you under my skin 
My head is taking a spin What am I remembering? Do you feel it too? This day Then we conjured up some repartee, walked along the moonlit bay, and then we spent a night in ecstasy. I didn't want to say goodbye, kind of made me want to cry, but then you had a reason why, that's how it had to be. And now I'm standing by you, and hoping dreams do come true. But then you turn away, I'm thinking that's okay, that's in my deja vu too. Do you feel it too, this deja vu? Sax. up some repartee, walked along the moonlit bay, then we spent a night in ecstasy. I didn't want to say goodbye, kind of made me want to cry, but then you had a reason why, that's how it had to be. And now I'm standing by you. And hoping dreams do come true But then you turn away Thinking that's okay That's in my deja vu too I wonder if we're in A deja vu I wonder if we're in I think that'll make a nice track. That'll be an excellent track. Woo! <laughs> you made me feel again. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Ed. How you doing? I was in a deja vu. <laughs> What'd you say? Makes me wish I was in a deja vu. I'm in oh. a deja vu with the with the picture in the background. Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's 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 kind of you have to think. I, I think it makes sense. <laughs> I think. You know, it does, so. <clears throat> but the thing is, is that it only has to make sense to you. I mean, people are going to get it or they don't get it, and you don't have to nurse all of them along. <laughs> oh, I love your attitude. I love that attitude. That's great. I'm with <laughs> right, right. They get it or they don't. And you're not in charge of nursing them along. <clears throat> you don't have I to. Wish I, I wish I was in that place in life where I really didn't give a crap. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's not saying that you don't give a crap. I mean, you do give a crap, but it's just that like, you only give a crap about the people who get it. You know Which, what I'm that, saying? That's like, true. <clears throat> it's true. not your job to grow up the population who doesn't get it. If they don't get it. If they don't stamp their ticket and get on the fucking Stephen Blaine bandwagon, then get the fuck <laughs> off. You're not on my team. I don't need you. You, you say it, baby. You got, yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm telling you, and that it goes for all all of the poets. Like, we're not in charge of doing the work for everyone else. Like, no. they gotta do the work for themselves. All we can do is put it out there. <clears throat> if they take it, they take it. If they don't, they don't. But that's not our problem. It's the, their problem. That is that is so damn healthy, Marissa. What a healthy attitude you have. I like that. I, I'm so glad a man uses my name and not a negative way. That makes me feel so very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes. Right? It's it's yes. Fuck it. You can't do the work for other people. They gotta do their own work, y'all. Straight up. All you could do is create a space for people to come if they want and feel safe and cheer them on. 
and nurture them and foster them. And if they don't get it, well, fucking they'll get it hopefully before they die. And if not, it's the best opportunity. <laughs> and they'll learn it in the next life. It's fucking fine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not your fault. It's not your responsibility. All right. Uh, thank you, Stephen. <clears throat> Christopher Moore, are you ready to give us another poem? Yes, I am. I like how he uh, comes out like the man behind the curtain. Yes, I am. <laughs> and my deep voice makes it worse. <laughs> it's not worse, it's better. Don't, oh my God, all my, my guys. No, it's better, it's not worse. Don't worry about it. You're just perfect just the way you are. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, anyway, um, earlier this week, Spofest had a Halloween themed um, poetry and prompts event. And they had one of their prompts um, take a non scary object or an inanimate object and make it scary and tell a story out of it. So um, I chose a lawn gnome. And I do apologize if you were at Ray Jane's on Friday. Um, this is a repeat. A what? <laughs> you chose what, what was what? that? A lawn gnome. <laughs> what the fuck is that? It's like a garden gnome, you know, a like a gnome that you decorate on your lawn. A lawn gnome? Yeah. All right. I apologize. My deepest apologies. <laughs> I live in the desert. Everything here is fucking rock. We do have garden gnomes, but we don't Same have thing. no lawn gnomes. G N O M E, like a gnome. Like a or gnome. you could have desert gnomes. With the hats. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I figured I would clarify for all of those who don't have fucking grass in their yards. All right. You could call it a desert gnome. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it would be all weathered and like crusty and like cracked and shit. Like my gnomes that, that they write a poem about yeah. that. That's like my poem. Yeah. It's all desert and dry and beaten and cracked. There she knows go. what a gnome is. She doesn't know what a lawn is. Maybe I know what a lawn is. <laughs> I know what a lawn is. You don't have I didn't, know, any. I didn't know what a lawn gnome was. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, okay. Um, I guess I'll just read the poem now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. I was told a Russian witch put a curse on it. Others say it was a Soviet experiment in the 70s that went horribly, horribly wrong. I don't know how it came to rural Pennsylvania. Of all the places, I thought Paris, Rome, the Balkans, how it ended up in redneck Pennsylvania, God only knows. My dog barked at it last week when it moved. I haven't seen the dachshund since that day. It ended up on the roof once, I don't know how, but its blood red eyes looked through my window. I was able to knock it off with a baseball bat but the next morning several were in a circle in the front yard there were so many pointed hats so many pointed hats that's all i got you're muted marissa <laughs> oh, so many! Oh! there were so many so many i don't think i've ever heard christopher moore repeat himself before there were so I repeat many. myself often. <laughs> so many pointed hats. I have weird hair in my eyes. I don't want a hair in my eyes. All right, so uh, here we go. Let me see if I can read this with my red glasses on because it's hot. All right, thank y'all so much for coming through tonight to the Rocky Horror Poetry Show. I'm going to close us out with a poem by Sylvia Plath. It's one of her gothic poems titled The Snowman on the Moor. Stalemated, their armies stood with tottering banners. She flung from a room, still ringing with the brute of insults and dishonors. And in fury left him glowering at the coal fire. Come find me, her last taunt. He did not come. 
but sat on guarding his grim battlement by the doorstep her winter beheaded daisies mirrorless gaunt warned her to keep indoors with politic goodwill not haste into and into a landscape of stark wind harrowed hills and weltering mist. But from the house, she stalked, intraceable as a driven ghost, across more snows, pocketed by rock claw and rabbit track, she must yet win him to his knee. Let him send police and hounds to bring her in. Nurse her rage through bare whistling heather over styles of black stone. To the world's white edge she came. She called hell to subdue an unruly man and join her siege. It was no fire lurting fork-tailed demon, volcanoed hot from marble, snow heap of more to ride that woman. With spur and knout down from pride's side, instead a grisly, thewed, austere corpse white, giant heaved into the distance stone hetched high, sky high, and snow flowered his whirling beard at his tread. Ambushed birds by dozens dropped dead in the hedges. Oh, she felt no love in his eye. Worse, she saw dangling from that spike studded belt. Ladies shook sheaved skulls mournfully the dry tongues clacked their guilt our wit made fools of kings unmanned kings sons our masteries amused court halls for that brag we barnacle these iron thighs throned in the thick of a blizzard the giant roared up with his chittering trophies from burnt of axe crack. She shield sideways, a white fizz, and the giant pursuing crumbled to smoke, humbled then and crying. The girl bent homeward, brimful of gentle talk and mild obeying. And that <laughs> is a great Sylvia Plath poem. She is a great Gothic uh, poet. A lot of people don't know she wrote a lot of Gothic poetry. Uh, yeah, a lot of dark and stormy stuff. Like us all, right? We are all dark and stormy and disobedient and belong to no one because we're misfits. But hey, it's okay. We belong to each other perhaps. Thank you all so very much for a wonderful Halloween night. I wish you all the best of time this, uh, the finish out the year. Please come back. Uh, November, we have Stephen Blaine. We have December hour. Well, the, to finish November, we have our Friendsgiving. So if you do not have a lot of friends or family or you don't like your friends or family, have your chosen friends and family in your life. We do have uh, Friendsgiving um, in November. You can share some work or just share space with uh, poets around Thanksgiving. December, we have the uh, uh, po the uh, anniversary show and our New Year's Eve show. We will not have a show Christmas Eve, but I thank you all so very much for being here. And, uh, oh, Black Friday open mic. Well, so Christopher, I got to get with you about that. I'm going to give you my other, I'm going to give you my other open mic for that because it, it sounds like um, I got a message, Ray Jane, but it sounds like Ray Jane is going to be here for her open mic in November. So I will mm -hmm. give you, 
um, a, a different open mic, uh, a Zoom, and you'll have at least an hour for that. Uh, okay, for sounds good. And uh, but yeah, so we'll get going. But from what I gather, Ray Jane will be here. Uh, so she will have her uh, Freestyle Fridays with Ray Jane the last Friday of November. And we'll be just doing some fun stuff. Um, otherwise, thank you all so very much for being here. I'm blessed to have you all. I will see you next Saturday, Poetry in a Movie. We have Nightmare on Elm Street versus Hocus Pocus. You got to be here if you want your vote to count. And uh, we can watch a movie together and maybe get to second base. Ah! Ah! For those of you who are paying attention. Woo! Aren't... Have, a, have a spooky weekend. <laughs> Thanks, Urban Cowboy. Uh, uh, gone, Matt. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Robert, Marianne, Canson, Eddie, everyone. Thank you so much. I'll see you all next time. Okay. Oh, are we, I'm sorry. Are we doing the movie? Uh, next Saturday in oh, place of poetry and a movie. Oh, sure, no problem. It's yeah. been spooky in a in a bloody night with such frequent and fre um, freaky <laughs> and delights. <laughs> yes, fantastic poetry in a movie is next. It's next Saturday. Uh, it's next Saturday. Um, uh, for us. So go and check the uh, check the calendar, the list of events for for this coming week. Okay. You're not doing the toast? No, I could do the toast. It's all right. all right. You don't have to. Here we go. Here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain. For we may or may not ever all be here again. So blessed to have you all. This has been Saturday night. Open mic featuring no one but you. It's our Halloween. What do we call this? The Rocky Horror Poetry Show right here at The Word is Right. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. Thank you all so much for everyone who came through. Woo! I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Happy Halloween, Happy my Halloween. wonderful witches and fiends. And anyone in between, woo! <laughs> Bye.